Like why, like why, when, where, how? How? Oh, okay. Hey y'all, it's your girl Pound Cake. And today I'm coming to you with a story time. I know I haven't told a story time in a very long time. However, I want to go ahead, like I said before, break up the monotony of the vlogs, especially since I'm not traveling. Um, it can get real like boring and tedious, especially since I'm like a loser and I don't really do anything. So yeah. But anyway, I want to go ahead and do a story time. I don't know what to title it, honestly, because <sighs> like what would I call this? And I'm gonna give you a little a little backstory, a little context. So I'm not sure if many of you know, but if you know, you know. Um, my favorite singer is Tank. I'm like a huge fan of Tank. Um, I love his artistry. I think he's amazing. That man can sing. Um, I'm not one of those fans that are like, oh my god, he's a hard drive. I want to be with him. Oh my god, I'm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not that at all. I do find him attractive. I think he's an attractive person, but I'm not attracted to him, if that makes sense. But I think, you know, he's nice looking. He's a nice looking man. I mean, he's a married man. People should lust over a married man. But anyway, I digress. That's not, that's not why I'm here. That's not why I'm here. Now, how I became a fan of Tank, I'll tell you a little bit of the backstory. So, um, back in the day when I was a jit, <laughs> was a young lady, little girl. Um, since I was five years old, I would go to the hair salon like every two weeks. My mom would take my sister and I religiously to get our hair done and it started when we were like five. So from like five to 15, I was in the hair salon every two weeks. Now, I do feel like that's a black girl's like rite of passage is going to get her hair done. I went to this beauty salon and having that whole experience because it is an experience. Um, you can have an appointment at 10 o'clock and what will happen is there will be four other people who are in there as well. And she will be like we'll be rotating. Like she'll have one girl under the dryer, one under the shampoo bowl, one in her chair getting blow dry, one another two under the dryer, two waiting in, like, bruh. So your apartment can be at ten, but you're not leaving there till five, you know? And we used to never complain. Like if you knew you were getting your hair done that day, you knew you were gonna be there all day. Like you knew you were gonna be there all day. And what's funny is like we never had like you know tablets consoles phones none of that like you really would get the experience and like you know just kind of soak up all the beauty shop ha has to offer like the gossip you know people coming in there um you know entrepreneurs back or hustlers back then but you know entrepreneurs people who were just trying to you know make money like and make a living um and this is how it comes into play so you know, I can say for black girls, the beauty shop is a rite of passage. Just like for black men, it's the barbershop. Like, we all know that. So, um, one the time I was there, I was 15. So, fast forward, I was 15. Um, and, like I said, people would come in and they would sell stuff. So, like, people would come in selling food. People would come in selling drinks. People would come in selling clothes. Matter of fact, the scene of Baby Boy, which I'll insert. You're blessing me. What you sell? So, this is like the um pretty much the experience like people will come in to sell stuff and you know sometimes it'll be attractive men using their attractiveness to get you to buy bullshit like <laughs> i mean they were selling like two-piece suits hats combs brushes with like all kind of weird stuff and we would buy it like or not we people would buy it um and so this week of time there's a guy that would come in and he would sell like he got like the, the african set like on lock so he's selling african black soap shea butter uh, incense, body oil, like all that stuff. But he also sold burnt CDs. Now, back then, um, if you had like a CD burner, like you could make some money. And you know, of course this was back then. And just a disclaimer, I did end up buying his CD for real, for real. But this is, you know, I was 15. Um, so he would have like CDs, like four for 20. If you buy four, you get a one for free. So it was like five for 20. But essentially they were $5 a piece. So my mom had bought three CDs and it was like, oh, you can pick two. So I'm like, okay, cool. So the guy recommended the Tank CD. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll take it. I got that one and I got another CD. I'm not sure what it was at the time, but um, I got it. And I'm like, okay, cool, I go home. He was right, that CD was so good. And at the time, only Maybe I Deserve came out. And so I heard slowly, I was like, that's my jam. But I Can't Get Down is my absolute favorite song. Like, absolute favorite song on that CD. 
And then of course number two is slowly. But yeah, other bops, um, Let Me Live and Lady on My Block. Like yeah, some, some bops are that CD, but those two were the ones for me. So that's when I became a fan. And then ever since then, like, I've been a Tank fan. So from 2001, I've been a Tank fan. So we had just hit 21 years. Okay, me. Okay. So anyway, um, when I became an adult, but like, you know, later in time, like, you know, after 25, I started going to his concerts. Like I would go to his shows and, you know, just kind of step into that lifestyle and like, just go to like different live concerts and shows, which I really enjoy. Now, of course you guys know I live in LA. He also lives here. So whenever he would have a show here, I would go. Right, so, I mean, it's only right around my city, like why not? So this particular venue, um, me and my friends used to go to all the time. And whenever we find out that he was coming, we're there. Now, this place is a standing room only place, so general admission. So my rule for general admission events is because I like to be in the very front. I don't eat or drink while I'm there or like a couple hours prior because I'm gonna go to the restroom because I'm gonna lose my spot. <laughs> like I'm front row, front and center. That's what we doing. Like that's what we doing, you know? Um, and this particular time, that's how it was. Now we get there, um, he comes out like 12.30ish. And we got to like at nine, but that's how they do with those kind of venues, it's fine. And, um, yeah, he does his show, he does his thing. Now, I, like I said, I went to many concerts, so I know all his ad-libs, all his sets. I mean, I know how he gonna sing what, and when he gonna sing it, I, I know. Because I, I, I frequent these places, like, I know I go to his shows all the time. Keep that in mind. So I'm in the front doing my thing, boom. And maybe like five or six songs in, he like comes and grabs my phone. At the time, I had a Samsung Note 4, right? And this is the one with the removable back battery. He took the battery out. And he grabs my phone to like record himself. Why am I should die? Huh? So he has my phone back like what you did. And I was like, pardon me? <laughs> An opportunity of a lifetime and my phone dies? Mm -mm. So I slid that back off took that battery out, and you know how we do. I'm hitting the battery, trying to get any kind of juice, rubbing it together, hitting it in my hand, shaking it, blowing on it, like trying to get any kind of juice out of this battery. So I'm like maybe a good five, six minutes. And mind you, I'm like in the center, but I'm like a little to the left, right? So I'm not like smack dead in the center, I'm like a little to the left of the center. So like off center, that makes sense. On the left side. So I'm my battery back in. Turn my phone back on, and I'm at like eight, nine percent. I'm like, okay, cool, we did, we did a little something. So he, of course, you know, when they were now on the stage, they worked the room, so he's on the right side of the stage, you know, entertaining that side. Uh, when he comes back, I'm gonna hand him my phone back. So I handed my phone back, and he was like, oh, it's ready now? He's like, oh, you're saying, bro, that motherfucker. Like, he's just talking, talking trash, because he's a comedian too, like, he's funny. And so he's singing, while he's singing, he hands me the mic. When he asked me the mic, y'all, and you know I sing all the time, like, and I, I can hold a note, y'all, I sound like a freaking rooster. I was like, I don't know if I was yelling or what, it was like the excitement took over or what, but I sounded terrible, terrible. And I was like, and he snatched the mic back. <laughs> My favorite singer hands me the mic to sing a song that I know, I mean, I know these things. And he snatched it back because he was, he was unimpressed with my, with my vocals. <laughs> but what it is was I think I was a little overexcited and I was like yelling. And of course I'm not a professional so I've never sung. Like I'm not sure how this is set up. Ain't no sound check for me. Like it's no me, 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 one, two, three for me. No, none of that. So I felt some kind of ways about it, but not on his fault on my end. Like how can I drop the ball like that? Like how can I fumble the bag? Like. It could have been something. I could have sung the whole verse or something if he would if he was impressed with my vocals, but he wasn't. So, bruh. <laughs> like I don't know if I was like super excited, overly excited, or what. But my voice was cracking. It, I was I don't know if I was yelling too loud. Cause again, I'm a professional, so I'm not sure how these mics and stuff work. So I'm assuming I'm singing at the top of my lungs because how that how that that out, y'all. How that came out. 
sheesh it was terrible and i have the clip i, I mean to this day i have a clip <laughs> it was awful like my singing voice i don't know what happened and it, it was so funny like i think a lot of people in there knew i was a huge fan because they were like really like egging me on and like it was giving like glee like joy like oh my god you know and it just was so funny to me like i let me and my friends laugh up to this day because i'm just like bro i have an opportunity to really like show my like showcase my talent and your girl fumbled that bag like i dropped the ball y'all like <laughs> like i really dropped the ball like i hate that for me and that's like one thing that i like regret to this day like how i really didn't show up and show out when i have the opportunity like this man handed me the mic and i yelled I both of them lyrics out and he took it back from me <laughs> He was like, give me that mic. Y'all, I opportunity have a lifetime. And I found with the bag. I hate that for me. Like I really do. Like, like why, like why, when, where, how? How? Oh, okay. I've been in front rows a lot of times, but I've never got the mic again. And so I don't know if you remember me or what, but y'all. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to share a little story time with you guys um, about something. It was like one of my the moments I regret the most, the absolute most, which is I find funny. But I'm glad it happened, and I have the footage, and I'm actually gonna show you guys right now. That was the time my phone was available, my absolute favorite singer. Like, I'm never gonna live that down, like ever. But anyway, hope you guys like my story time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, as always, I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>